cardiovascular system, also called the circulatory system, is the transportation system of the body. The major structures that make this possible are the heart, blood vessels, and blood. Simply put, the heart pumps the blood in order to move nutrients through the blood vessels to nourish and remove the metabolic wastes from the body. The purpose of this video is to present a basic understanding of the cardiovascular system. A more in-depth study of the system will be presented in other CTE videos where we will look into each specific part and function of this system. The heart has two major circuits within the circulatory pathway which work together in a closed circulatory system. These two pathways are the pulmonary pathway and the systemic pathway. In the human organism, the right side of the heart pushes the blood through the pulmonary circuit so that it can be oxygenated in the lungs. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to the entire body. The blood is then returned to the heart via the systemic pathway, where the cycle begins again through the pulmonary pathway. It can be said that the heart is actually two pumps divided by a septum or wall. As mentioned in the muscular system video, the heart is an involuntary muscle that works somewhat independently from the nervous system. This will be explained in more detail later, but for now, let's take a look at what makes up the heart. The heart is a muscular organ with four hollow chambers. It consists of two atria, which are the upper chambers, and two ventricles, which are the lower chambers. The left and right sides of the heart are divided by the septum. The heart is also made up of three layers of tissues. The innermost layer is the endocardium, which is the thin, smooth membrane that lines the inside of the chambers of the heart and forms the surface of the valves, of which there are four. Next is the myocardium, which is the middle layer. It's the muscular wall of the heart, or the heart muscle. And third, the pericardium. This is a tough, double-layered, fibrous sac which covers the heart. The word vessel has many meanings, but in anatomy and physiology, blood vessels are meant for carrying blood throughout the body. The blood vessels are similar to a two-way highway system. One lane, or direction, is known as the arteries, and the other is called the veins. Starting in the heart, the blood flows to the body through arterial blood vessels. The largest of these arteries is known as the aorta. These arteries provide the pathway for blood to travel to the body from the heart. Arteries are then further divided into arterioles and arterial capillaries. Arterioles are smaller blood vessels that branch out from larger arteries and lead to the arterial capillaries, which are the smallest blood vessels in the body. The arterial capillaries are connected to the venous capillaries. The arterial side of the capillaries is dropping off oxygen and nutrients to the body's cells. The venous side of the capillaries is picking up metabolic waste from the body cells. Together they form a network where arteries and veins connect, completing the closed circulatory circuit. The blood flow from the venous capillaries will flow back from the body to the heart through the venous blood vessels. Similar to the arteries, only in reverse, the blood flows from the venous capillaries into a system of veins called the venules. These venules connect to larger veins which carry the blood back from the body to the heart. Via the largest veins, known as the superior and inferior vena cava. Now that we have an understanding of how the blood moves throughout the body, we can discuss what it actually is. Blood is a fluid or liquid known as plasma. Plasma is made up of 90% water, 
and this is why drinking a sufficient amount of healthy water is absolutely necessary. Blood contains many substances, but the three main substances we will discuss in this video are the three different types of blood cells, each having its own particular function. The first type of blood cell is called erythrocytes. These are known as the red blood cells. Leukocytes are known as the white blood cells and thrombocytes are the platelets. Now the heart works alone in that it has its own electrical system designed to work on its own independent from the nervous system. If the nervous system is damaged and cannot send signals to the skeletal muscles or to other major organs such as the brain, the heart will not be affected because it has its own chemical slash electrical system that will continue to pump the blood throughout the body. People with brain damage are placed on life support for breathing, not for pumping or contracting the heart. The only thing that would stop this mechanism is the lack of oxygen and or a blockage or direct injury to the heart. The conductive pathway within the heart has four main stations through which it sends its electrical impulses in order for the heart to keep beating, which is roughly 100,000 times a day. The first conductive pathway is the SA node. The SA node, known as the pacemaker, is located in the right atria. It starts the spark and passes it on to the next relay station. The AV node is located on the back wall of the heart, between the right atria and the right ventricle. The spark is then passed into the next relay station, the bundle of his, located in the heart's septum, and lastly, the Purkinje fibers, which spread the electrical charge throughout the myocardium, which is the cardiac muscle, and causes the heart to contract, atrius first, and then the ventricles. After watching this video, you should now have a basic understanding of what the cardiovascular system is, the basic functions, and the basic structures that define the heart. Here's a quick recap. The cardiovascular or circulatory system is an organ system whose basic purpose is to circulate blood to and from cells in the body in order to transport nutrients and remove waste. The heart pumps the blood to the body through the arteries which branch off into smaller blood vessels called arterioles. The network of capillaries is where oxygen and other nutrients diffuse from the blood and into the cells. As oxygen and nutrients are diffused into the cells from the arterial capillaries, metabolic waste is diffused into the venous capillaries from the cells. The blood returns to the heart via the veins where the cycle begins again. And remember that the heart has a beat of its own through the electrochemical circuit system and its four relay stations. To sum it all up, the heart pumps blood to the body through the arteries and returns from the body to the heart through the veins. Unfortunately, the heart is also subject to disease and conditions. In fact, the number one reason for an early demise is still due to heart failure. These conditions will be discussed further in future CTE videos. Thanks for watching and look for more CTE videos where we will explore deeper into the cardiovascular system.